Um, so first off, how long have you been playing Overwatch for? Um, so Overwatch the game, uh, since a little bit after release, but I switched to PC for the first time last year oh, yeah. early, um, like uh, during, in the middle of COVID, like February, January, maybe it was mm-hmm. April, May, right? right. Um, and so, um, when I was, I'm overseas now, but like, when I was in the States, um, I had a lot of time, so I put in three, four, five hours a day, and I made it up to, like, I had like, maybe two plat games before I fell back down. Um, but then I had to take the last, like, few months off because I was studying for some IT certifications. Mm-hmm. Um, so, so I just get back into the swing of things, came back in, like, high gold um, a couple seasons ago, and I've just, like, fallen drastically <laughs> down okay. since then. And so now I'm just trying to, you know, rebuild the fundamentals um, and everything. So can you repeat again how, how long ago had you got gotten back into the game? Uh, it's probably been a moment since then. Okay. And then let's say like the past two weeks or so, how often have you been playing the game? Um, the past two weeks, I would say probably a, a couple hours every other day or more. Okay. And then final question for you before we begin is, do you have any questions for me? No. All right, so then we can just go ahead and get started. It'll just be a minute or so while I'm looking for something to talk about. Point me in the right direction. Be careful out there. Moving behind. Okay. First thing I'd probably be doing is throwing in a dynamite, like just right, right away, like at the very start, because since it's a cool on a cooldown, right? Like the the earlier you throw it, the more you're going to be getting during the fight, right? Like whereas if we were to throw it like halfway through the fight, well, we might the fight might end before we get a second dynamite. Whereas if we were to throw it at the very beginning of the fight, well, now we can get in one at the start, one at the end, right? So whenever you're throwing dynamites, you want to pr- usually open up fights with them because it's a good chunk of damage into a big group of people and if you look at it like you know right here i think we're hitting three people with that um reaper might fade it but um if we were to throw it while they're all over there we might even hit more than three people when they're grouped up a little bit further uh, a little bit closer but you know in any case i'll, pro- I'll probably open up with that Fire in the hole. <laughs> So, nice shots on the monkey. Did we run out of ammo? Here we decide to start reloading um, when we still have three shots left and Mercy's one HP next to us. So, make sure we're paying attention to the Mercy. And, you know, this is maybe an awareness thing of paying attention to our environment and who's around us. Because here we could definitely still be shooting at Mercy and maybe killing her. Whereas, if we don't shoot at Mercy, I think someone else is about to kill her. Like, Hanzo's about to kill her. But we can't even see that Hanzo's right next to us from our perspective. Um, so from the current vantage point, we could be the only person who could kill Mercy, and therefore this could be letting her escape if we don't. But in any case, she does die, but we could have, you know, finished her off as well. Yeah, that's one of my bad habits. I, I reload way too much. I noticed that, um... Yeah, which isn't which isn't a bad thing on Ash, where you can reload a couple bullets, like you know, anytime you. But you reload when you have a lull in time. Anytime there's nothing else to do. Anytime you can't be shooting at something. But any, every, some when you can be shooting at something and you have ammo, you want to be shooting at something. Oh, yeah. Here it comes. Yeah, very nice. Let me handle it. Thanks. I understand. Smoke him out of there. Warning. Engaging. You have some skill. There comes head something to provide. To return. All right, so we're going to talk about something. We're at two minutes. Um, are you familiar with what crosshair placement is? The theory, yes. 
theory. Okay, so then let, let you know. Let's talk um, about cross replacement and how it currently affect your gameplay. So, some a habit that I'm noticing is every time we go to shoot someone, we flick up two heads, right? Or just flick up in general, right? So we'll <coughs> aim, we'll aim down here, and then two when we whenever we go to shoot someone, we'll go up like this, right? To hit headshots, right? And then we'll readjust back down, and then we'll go back up, right? And then this is roughly the aim style in which we have, right? Where we look down flick up every time we're shooting right so um i can show you that when we go back into the game right just so you can see it for yourself but this is very uh, a not so great aim style is very it's going to be very inconsistent so let's first off talk about flicking and why you probably don't want to be flicking in certain situations so um flicking is only useful in, in certain situations so first off um when there's a very fast moving target so let's say like tracer for example is blinking around us well um, to hit the tracer who's now behind us, we're going to have to flick around really fast to go to the tracer, right? Because flicking by definition is anytime your crosshair needs to move somewhere very, very fast, right? Or for example, let's say like someone sneaks up behind us, right? Where we ne might need to, you know, turn around real quick to shoot at them. Or if we're aiming down main and then all of a sudden someone pops up on the high ground here and we have to flick up to shooting at the person on the high ground, right? So um, the times where flicking is needed is where you do flick and when flicking is not needed you don't flick so when flicking is not needed is when you're already aiming at the person or in the general direction of the person right so think for example here when i flick up to this per this person i'm gonna flick up but then after i flick up i'm not gonna flick again instead i'm going to adjust to the head and then finish off the target so you see the first gigantic flick up i miss the shot and then i just adjust to the head and it, it wasn't really a flick right so when we're already aimed straight at somebody flicks aren't needed for flick flicks aren't going to do anything for you and in fact they can, they can be counterproductive because you can flick off of the person right we can go too far or we could could end up um, just flicking to the wrong places. I don't know what that sound is outside. Oh, there's a big truck passing by my house. All right. So yeah, so like fl flicking really is just going to be not needed in the instances in which we're using it. So instead, what we might want to be doing, which could be a lot better, more accurate, whatever, is keeping good cross replacement. So cross replacement is uh, basically placing your crosshair in the best place possible to hit the best and easiest shot. So what the, the big part of that that would apply here is aiming at head level, right? So now if we're walking around aiming head level, right, this is very little adjustment to hit headshots, right? So whenever you have to go do flicks and do a very large adjustment, these shots become very, very difficult to hit. Whereas if we are to just go, you know, slightly to the side, they become much, much easier shots to land, right? Now on top of that, right, if we're aiming at body level, right, we're just turning this corner, all our shots are just, we're just spamming on the corner, spamming in the shields, whatever, all our shots are just naturally body level body shots, right? But if we're aiming at head level, now all of our shots just naturally become head shots without very, uh, with very little effort put into it, um, just because it naturally changes how you're aiming. So um, aiming head level, right? Set another part to cross replacement is aiming where we know people are going to be. So um, if we know bots on the top left and the bot's gonna come back on the top left, um, then we can pre-aim at head level so that when he comes, it's very little adjustment because we're already aiming at his head, right? Here, we know bots on top left, right? So we're gonna aim top left, come out looking top left, right? So when we come out here, we're already aiming at the head, right? Now here, these guys are on a slope. So the same way we look down on a Torb and up on a tank, we're gonna look down on these guys. So when we turn the corner, we're pretty much already looking straight at their head. Very little adjustment, because we're already keeping our crosshair there. So this makes shots much, much easier. It's gonna mean that you don't have to adjust up into the head every time you're trying to hit a headshot, right? It just means that you're kind of naturally aiming at the head level, right? It makes shots easier to land. And, more, and then on top of that, more consistent, right? Whereas flicking, um, you're, you might have really good days, right, where, you, where you're, where you like, really on point, but then at, anytime you're not having a really good day, it's just going to make it inconsistent where you can't, your body can't really keep up with the intense aiming that you're trying to go for, right? Does that all kind of make sense? Yep. Um, and that's actually, uh, so that's why I said theory. So execution, what I, I have a hard time judging, like, the pre-aim, like the hit level height, like I have a hard time judging where my cursor should be, my process should be to be approximately the hit level height, especially going in certain fights. So there's, I don't know if you'll see them in this part, but there are plenty of fights that I've lost because of crosshair place, placement where um, I hit a body shot that should have easily been a hit shot yeah. in the right spot. I just, I'm still trying to get used to like 
where the crosshair needs to be to line up the edge. Yeah, so intentionally, make sure we're just intentionally thinking about it. But yeah, okay. it's usually like, you know, while you're going through, just, you know, keep on trying to think about it while you're playing. But, you know, it's going to be roughly this, this spot, this. You know, every character is going to have a different height, but there's roughly a similar height between a bunch of different characters, right? So you can see it here, like I go, you know, Ash, Bastion's going to be a little bit different. Doomfist is going to be, you know, roughly the same height, right? You can still have a headshot there. Echo's you know, a little bit higher. Genji's a little bit lower. Hanzo's going to be the right height, right? Junkrat's going to be, you know, a little bit lower, just just by a hair, but I think, uh, yeah, just a little too low. McCree's going to be the right height, right? May's going to be the right height, right? Far's going to be the right height, right? Reaper's going to be the right height, right? So all, most characters are going to have kind of this, oh, Soldier's like a little bit higher. Um, you know, most characters are going to have the same standard hiding, right? Um, which you just kind of want to acquire in your head, which is like, this is the standard height right here. Right, and we're gonna walk around aiming here, and then we adjust uh, uh, accordingly on a couple different characters. Right, so that's yeah. just, you know that, that's just what we want to be doing, trying to find that. Um, and it, it does become slightly more difficult, I'd say, particularly when you're aiming up or down, because then you need to find the head level, not for you, because you're not gonna walk around the because this is because I can acquire like I can. Uh, um, just naturally, because I understand where the level is, I can just like all of a, like just acquire head level. This is like head level right now. Like if I were to walk over to the bots right now, I would just I'd be at head level, right? So here I'd be aiming head level, right? Um, so you can you kind of naturally acquire that. But like when you're we're aiming up or down, well now we're not looking at our head level. That would be here. We're looking at their head level, right? So we're we're aiming up, and you, usually you're gonna be able to acquire that like just. Once you get used to it, it's going to be like at a certain height on doorways, like or it'd be like right here, right here on the doorway, roughly, right? And then you can adjust a little bit, but when you see people, so it'd be right there, yep. So, um, it, you know, it becomes, you, you get used to it as time goes on, but, you know, you just keep practicing okay. at it. Um, look out and watch for the for the, the head levels. And definitely, I would say that you, you're, you'll notice that there's a... Here, when we're aiming, we're aiming very, very low on people. So we definitely just want to aim up more in general. Welcome to Blizzard. Ready World. for battle. <laughs> so here you can see it when we're aiming. We go up, down. Okay, here we're aiming straight. And then we're going to go down, up, down, up. All right, down, up. <laughs> Down up. Team up for special attack. Here it comes. Dragon consume you. It's just, you know, a lot, lot of micro flicks, a lot of missed shots. Well, let's see, let's see what more, because no, nothing's really happened as of yet. All right, uh, way too early of a bob. So when it comes to your ultimates, most times the best timing for your ultimates are when the fight has begun, like right at the very start of the fight, right? You don't want to do too late, because if you do it too late, then that means that you give the enemy team an advantage and you could end up losing the fight before you even get a chance to use your ult. Um, and then on top of that, ults that are used first generally get more value than ults that are used second. But you also don't want to ult way too early. Right now, this is way too early. Um, as of currently, we're ulting when the fight has not begun yet, right? If we're ulting when the fight has not begun yet, what's going to happen is we're going to toss Bob in and then they can just either wait out Bob or they can, because right now they're even they're down a player, so they have to wait anyways, and then they're also going to be down Junkrat in a second, so they're going to have to wait anyway. So the easiest thing for them to do here would just be to wait out Bob, and then Bob hasn't accomplished anything, right? Um, the other thing is they could just very easily melt Bob and just kill him 
super easily because if the fight hasn't started yet, they're not pressured from other people, right? Like right now, they could just have five people look at Bob and melt Bob and then Bob's gone, right? Whereas if they're in the middle of a fight, well, now they can't have five people look at Bob and melt Bob. And if they do, well, then they're just getting melted by the rest of your team. So ultimately, we want to have Bob for when the fight's beginning, right? The other thing I would say is like, you know, this it's you you're usually not going to want to use ults in between fights because the whole enemy team is going to even if we work to kill get some kills and stagger them well now we're going to um be basically down ultimates and then they're going to come into the next fight with more ultimates then right so we want to usually have ultimates for fights not in between fights and currently this is an in between fights uh in between fight and you can tell when fights are actually beginning when people are close to each other like uh you know it, especially this is the big one like when people are within range so like for example if their entire team were to be where their junk rat is that would be more so the start of a fight right be because they're all much further forwards if there are uh, like if their team were to like just use like two ults right now well maybe that'd be the start of the fight because they're looking to run in right now um if like a bunch of picks are flying then that you know that can also be the start of a fight but you know really the ra the ra it's the range right now and they're way too far back so just this is much too early of an ultimate and then therefore it's not really going to accomplish a ton even if we were to get like a bunch of kills off of it all right, because we get a bunch of kills off of it, but now that we're down two ults, and then they have the three, almost four ults, so now we've gone from being at an ult advantage to now being neutral, and then possibly them even being at the advantage. They actually do have the advantage. So we went from having an ult advantage to now them having the ult advantage just because we used two ults in a fight that maybe didn't even need an ultimate. Okay. Tossing in, uh, just tossing in a dynamite. Just really easy damage. You want to use that thing as often as possible. Good source of Bob charge as well as just easy damage. Right. Want to be reloading every time you have a lull in time. Or you just, or there's just nothing to do. So when you know Zarya walks out of our line of sight here, just re reload like one bullet. Right. All all you need to do. You know you can since Ash can reload bullets individually. You usually want to just sneak in a couple every time every chance you get where you're not actively shooting at something or you can't see something and so that this is fine you know. i like that we actually ducked behind cover when we did that that's a good idea Ooh, very nice dynamite all right some so so far played pretty well only big mistake was the bob and then a couple missed shots but i imagine things start to go poorly at some point here okay probably because our team's pushing that far forwards into them <laughs> Team up for special attack. All right. Um, if your team's going all the way into their spawn, I would probably go with them here. So that's what I struggle with too. Like uh, traditionally, I know, like I would say, this is overextending. Mm -hmm. uh, so I know we're going to get punished for it. And so I've seen like YouTube videos where they say, if you know your team's overextending, currently, you tell them to go dive right themselves. Currently. Your team is not overextending. Right? No. You know, so let's talk on a couple points there. So first off, um, it is not overextending when you have a massive advantage, right? So when it uh -huh. is a six versus three, that is a massively won fight. You guys have very much won that won that fight. If we were to push, we would almost certainly secure kills, and it is very unlikely that we that we are to die here if we were to push as a full six people. Now it is probably overextending a little bit for the hog and the. Hanzo because the rest of our team is all the way back here so it's it's a little bit different if they don't have teammates right but if it, if you were a full six and you were to push in their spawn at the moment that would not be over extension because you can secure those kills and then back up and then they can't do anything to stop you because you just rolled them o over their players right so whenever you have a very massive player advantage going into their spawn is fine now let's also okay. talk through some different points there so if it were just if it's just hog and hanzo here overextending the, or them going into their spawn that is overextending yes right now let's also talk over like what if your whole team's doing it right so if one person so this is a quote from jane you might know jane he's an overwatch league coach or and or like you know he, he's done a lot of streaming and he's a very famous coach for overwatch um in any case he says when one person is doing something stupid that's called feeding when s six people are doing something stupid that's called a strategy so 
if your hog is to run into their spawn by himself, then that's feeding. If your entire team is to run into spawn, that's a, that's a strategy because you're doing it as a team, right? So that means that if like we had four or five people trying to run into their spawn, we should probably be going with them because us going with them allows them to actually do things in their spawn. And it means that they're actually up a player. Whereas if we were to sit back and not do anything, well, l l think of it this way. Um, like, l let's even think about it. Like, what if we were to take the advice of those other YouTubers and we sat around and didn't, didn't do anything and five of our teammates died? What the heck are we going to do then? Right. It's a, now it's a six V one. How the, right. what are we going to do against a 6v1 if we if our five teammates died? And if our five teammates run in and it's a 6v5, well, now we're putting our team at a disadvantage because we're not with them, right? Whereas if we are with them, well, now they're at an advantage. So the general rule of thumb, if it's one or two people, right, and they're just running through spawn and you can't really go and help them, let them do it, let them feed because you can still theoretically win this fight down a hog or down hog and Hanzo, right? It's still still t possible, right? But if you your entire team is going in and doing it, then I do it, right? So let, let's look back at our perspective, uh, or let's look at the fight here. So um, we we actually have, right? So they, they push in. I just want to see does our whole team go? So we have you know we have Mercy, Hog and Hanzo in there. So like and Orissa's put looks like she's pushing. So. As of this moment, I would probably be pushing forwards. And then if we need to back up, all, all we have to do is back up. And then we can just retake high ground with a coach gun. Um, so as of the moment, I would, like, once I see them doing that, I would probably push forwards. And then we can back up if needed. Now Mercy does back up a little bit. Yep. So now here, these guys are now overseeing their welcome because now they've gotten all their players back. They one two three four five six. Right now they got all their players back. They tired. They got the Hanzo. So now we should probably be looking to back up. So there was a brief moment in which we probably could have pushed. Now now we now that we didn't, we, it's better decision to stay back. Yeah, be looking to throw in a dynamite. Yep, there you go. All right. Um. Here, first off, make sure we're not standing still for extended periods of time. Usually, um, even sometimes when throwing dynamites, if you have a bunch of people, if you see that there's people looking at you, then if you're standing still, you're just going to get headshot and melted, right? So, yes, you want to stand still to hit the dynamite, but you can't do that if you have people looking at you and shooting at you because it's much more important to stay alive than it is to land one dynamite. So in this instance, you would AD strafe while also trying to still hit the dynamite, or you can AD strafe and then right as you're about to hit the dynamite, you can stand still. But here, notice how we stand still, and then therefore um, Mercy just looks at us and shoots at us, and then we take 82, you know, we're, we're down to 82 health, right? So then at this point, we should be requesting healing, um, and we currently can peak the, and just drop to our supports who can heal us, right? Because we're very low HP at the moment or peak for the mercy, whatever. Request healing. This will get you healing faster because it alerts your supports to where you are. Um, and then besides that, we just... Okay, yeah. Yeah, so in that instance, we just request healing too late. We don't drop on our supports. We, we And then we just kind of try to duel the mercy instead and then therefore we die, right? So we do get res. There, it seems as though we're not even like particularly aiming our shots at things. Like we kill the hog and then we keep shooting at kind of nothing there. Uh, Would we use the coach gun? On? Right, push back. Yeah, we push. Use on him. Okay. All right. So just a lot of chaos at the moment. So was that too late? Yeah, so in this instance, um, I'd probably say that this is a lost fight. So just let, let's talk about how to tell whether or not a fight is won or lost, right? So when you are, and this is all, all comes down to watching kill feed and paying attention to what's happening around you. When you are up one to two people, 
that is an advantage, right? When you have an advantage, you can play more aggressive, go further in, do more things because they have less people to shoot at you. When you are up two to three people, you've won the fight, right? At that point, when you've won the fight, you don't want to use ults because that would just be overkill. And then you also want to look to go in super aggressive and get stagger kills on the enemy team because they don't really have the players to contest you. When you are, this also goes the exact opposite way. When you are down one to two, that is a disadvantage, right? That is where you have pretty much lost the, or sorry, not the, I, I went ahead there. When you're at a disadvantage, you haven't lost the fight yet, right? That's where you just might want to play a little bit more passive just because you're down some players, right? Now, when you are down two to three players, that is a lost fight. At that point, you should probably be looking to um, get out if possible. And if you can't get out, you want to look to let them kill you. And you don't want to use ults because then it just gets wasted. So here, let's just look at why it's lost. So right now, it's a two versus four. Right, that means that we're down two players currently, but you know, two, being down two players isn't always a lost fight. So let's talk even even further in on that. So um, to, there's also other things that go into whether you're winning or losing, not just the uh, up or down kills. That's why two is the middleman, and that's why it goes one to two and then two to three. Is two is the middle because there's a lot of other things that dictate whether or not you're winning or losing. So um, things such as which team has more health, which team is, has better positioning, which team has more abilities, more ultimates, which team has closer spawns, right? Which team um, is just, you know, looking like they're winning, right? So, you know, a lot, lot of different things that go into this. Um, and as of the current moment, they're up two players. We are one HP and we could die any moment, right? There's a pro high likelihood that we could die like in the next half a second, and we don't have any healers around to heal us up, so there's no way we're staying alive for very long, right? On the enemy team, they're all full HP, they have two supports, so Monkey's low, but he's not in danger currently, and the supports can heal him up very easily. So as of the current moment, we are not, you know, we can maybe win this if we had a very significant advantage, but we don't have any significant advantages, right? So the two people, if, if you're down two people, you can still win it if you have a significant advantage. So let's say it's a 4v6, but everybody on their team is one HP, right? If any everybody on the team on the team of six is one HP, well maybe you'd be able to pull it around with some kills, right? Or let's say it's a four v six, but then we have close spawns like on a two CP map. Well maybe that's still winnable because we'll get our players back fast, right? So um, in situations like this, we have to identify what's going on around us, paying attention, being aware, and then as of the moment, I almost guarantee that this is a lot. You know, we could win it, right? Because there's always that chance, but there's a very high likelihood that this is a lost fight. So therefore, this is just a wasted ultimate. Okay, because we die in the next half a second, they're just gonna focus bomb, and then we lose the fight, maybe. Yeah, they're. Our team's just staggering in. They're gonna kill him. Okay. Pay attention to... Uh, okay, so in this instance, it's a one, two, three, four, yeah. Pay attention to how many teammates you have on point, right? Again, this is awareness. We don't want to be walking back in when they're about, when they're like an inch away from capping point and we don't have, and we can see our teammates through walls. We see, okay, there's in, they're, they're a second away from capping. We don't have any teammates on point. And we can see that they're through walls, that they're not on point. And we can also see on top of that that we don't have many teammates in there. We should not be pushing back in, because if we try to push back in here, well, now we're going to get dove like this by the monkey. And then there's a good likelihood that we could end up dying again. So, you know, oh, so we got moved back. Um, do you know the term for what we just did? What do you mean? Yeah, so do I said... Do you know the term for what we just did? If if you don't, uh, that's, that's, yeah, that's textbook. That I would call that textbook beating. Yeah. So this is this has a specific specific term that is called staggering. Are you familiar with that term? Yeah. Yeah. So just to clarify, you know what that is. Staggering is basically dying late and dying at bad times. So why staggering is bad is because now. Right, we've just we've just died, and our team we go all the way back to spawn, and our teammates all the way up here. Right, these guys could end up dying again, and then they go all the way up to spawn because they're without us. Right, so now these guys are walking out of spawn right now. So Mercy and Hanzo, because they're we're ten seconds behind them. By the time we get out of spawn, they could be all the way up here. Right now they have the right. choice. Do they wait for us or do they go in without us? Right, if they wait for us, then we've just wasted a bunch of time and let them push cart very far. Right. 
if they do not wait for us, well, now they're walking in at a disadvantage without us, and therefore, they're more likely to lose the fight, and they should probably they probably should wait for us, right? Now, on top of that, this also has the risk to start stagger trains, where, notice, right, this is what's happening currently, is a stagger train started where Mercy and Hans are staggered, and then they're responding, and then um, McCree, and that's that's us, us and Ball, staggered, and then we're respawning. So, and then on top of that, Anna and Roadhog are probably going to die in here in a moment, and then they die, and then they're respawning. So now we're all having this really staggered spawn. That's why that's where it comes from. We're, we have a staggered spawn where they get, die, or they come out, we come out, our other guys come out, right? And then let me mm-hmm. let me ask you yep. then. So the reason why I went forward like that is because I saw Anna was blown, and I figured I could probably buy a block for her to get away. So I probably I shouldn't have done that, regardless. Nope, probably shouldn't have. Because mm. okay. you're not because you're not gonna be able to body block versus if it's a two like you know if it's a two or three v six you're not gonna be able to body block right that's you're just gonna die so that's so when, a, that's the situation so in that situation yeah. she's stuck, she's too far forward and my response is just to let it happen yes let just it let it happen. happen so that would be an example okay. of one person overextending and you let them overextend because you don't want to just go in and kill yourself or to try to save them right okay um and then that would maybe allow our team to not st- start a big stagger train. So let's see, does the stagger train continue, right? Or like, does it keep happening? So mm, these guys get out, so they're they're fine. Okay, so stagger train looks to have ended. Now they're gonna wait for, wait for you guys. Um, we're really far back, right? It's noticing like how just like because we staggered, look how far away we are from our team and they're trying to engage, right? Right, so they're actually engage. our ball's engaging and people are fighting while we're still, you know, halfway coming back. So the last, in, in that last instance, just, don't walk back in, right? Is it, the big thing. So let's go back to our perspective. Oh, you look tired. Yeah, I just lost that duel. Like I knew I was at a disadvantage at range, but I figured we could hit him. But I just went. Mm, yeah. So here we we just ended up moving a bunch of shots. So first off, yeah. Um, I probably would not come up on this left side of high ground. I'd rather probably come up on this high ground instead. Um, why would you, why would you think that is the case? Why, why would I come up this right side instead of this left side? Knowing that Ash is there, I, um, I have a better chance of getting in under her mm, line okay. of sight. So let's say even so without, able... yeah, so that, that is very true. We, we, we want to be within range of Ash. Let's say even without knowing Ash is there. Um, maybe because that's closer to where the payload is right now? Exactly. Right, much, okay. much closer to where the payload's actually at. Right, we can see the payload through walls, and we know we can see all our teammates through walls, and we know the fight's not gonna happen around underneath this high ground or anywhere near this high ground. In fact, the fight's not even visible from this high ground. The fight's going to be visible from this high ground and this right. high ground. Right. So right now we're wa- walking basically to the wrong high ground that's very, very far away from where the actually the actual fight is. And then on top of that, like you said, we're also walking to where you're, we're very, very far away from Ash. She's going to have the range advantage. We can't use flashbang, all that type of stuff, right? So overall, at the moment, we're walking to the wrong high ground, pretty much. We also miss, like, every shot here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sir, I was like, whiff, 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 out loud. <laughs> Jesus. Uh, but I've been trying to get into the habit of just taking more shots, even if I miss, because what I was doing before mm-hmm. was like hesitating way too long. Yeah. And so I would like, you know, I would lose a duel and I only shot like two or three. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So mm-hmm. definitely, definitely usually a good idea to go for the full rate of fire and then get used to the full rate of fire than to just go and tap fire and do it two or three shots. Yeah. Now this is a fine high ground because the fight's actually visible from this high ground. So this is now a fine high ground to be on. That was me trying to figure out where I should target. Yeah, I'd be rolling just to... Oh, yeah, that's fine. That was a headshot. Yeah. Missed the headshot. Here. Um, doo doo doo. Now, this is pretty much a one fight. Right now, I would probably be taking this high ground. Now, a lot of people don't know. Are you familiar with how to get on top of this thing without using abilities? No. No? So I know. I didn't know you could with somebody yeah. like me. So um, you can just jump straight up this leg. So if you just walk up to this and you just spam your space bar, you will be uh-huh. able to just jump straight up here. 
right? Oh, wow. And then you can also, cr you know, you can walk around to this side, and on this side of it, you can jump up this little. I think you you have to wait until it rotates back around to the. You stand on this blue part, wait till it oh. rotates over to you, right? You can now therefore jump on top of this, so you can get all the way up on top of this thing, um, just just by doing some parkour. Yeah. Um, on top of that, you can also, if I'm not mistaken, I think jump up this side too. This one I'm not full as certain on because I don't do it nearly as often and I actually only discovered it like not too long ago. Um, but I'm pretty sure you can also jump up this leg as well if you're coming from like this side and you're trying to get up the high ground. I'm pretty sure you can jump up this leg, but not as certain on that one. It might be somewhere. Else. I know you can do it somewhere over here, but you might have to test that around <laughs> on which where you're supposed to be jumping up. <laughs> <laughs> Flashbang from that range, right? That would just secure like, the kill on him. Missing a lot of shots. Ash just coach gun top right. I know this because of audio awareness. Um, actually, never mind. I'm very wrong. Ash gun just didn't co coach gun from top right. She just coach gun down main. Uh, okay, okay. So I she coach gun v probably could have taken high ground there. Um, I'd at least be checking it out because that sounded as though she was using coach gun to just so get up the high ground. That's actually why I turned and walk walk away. I don't know. Was, yeah. Like, you maybe. Yeah. Mm, I would. I would turn and like look at her because you know we, we might want to make you know shoot at her if she's if he's trying to duel us right because if she because if we're still in her like look at this position with this positioning if she was on that top right high ground she can still see us from here and therefore she would just get off free shots on us while we're not looking at her right but in any case she's not on high ground there that that was just me mishearing. Okay, very nice. Look, they, 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 there we actually lined up the cross replacement, so that was good. Oh, drop from high ground, probably not a good idea. So here we just, we know that everyone's below us, yet yeah, we do this wrap around to the right, like we're gonna be able to see anybody, whereas, you know, if we just did something like this, well now we actually can see people, right? Like, yeah, we, that we, was just the brain part. Yeah. I, did, I couldn't think of any other way to get a vantage point. And then we, all, and then we do end up dropping as well. Aiming kind of at feet at the moment there. Probably could go for high noon, yeah. Oof, very nice high noon. Alright, so our high, high noon's better than Bob so far. <laughs> but particularly, it wasn't even the Bob, it was more so the Bob timing was the big thing yeah. with Bob. Alright, um, in a minute. Yeah, after, after this round, we'll go over strengths and weaknesses. Very nice shots. Alright, so we seemed... Oh. Request healing, make sure we're doing that just so we can get healing. We're not going to die randomly here. That time I fell. Yeah, so I, when got, it, I pushed over too hard. Yeah, whenever you go... Clo whenever you go close to an edge, usually it's a good idea to crouch, and this will lower your um, movement speed and make it easier to control your movement so you're not mm. just jumping off. And then on top of that, just okay. jump off the high ground because then we're giving up a really good positioning just to be dropping in on top of them. So make sure we're, we're paying attention to that. And then, yeah, I fell there. Yeah. Mm. You said crouching slows down your movement speed so you can have a lower chance of just falling off. Yeah, mm -hmm. exactly. Okay. Yep. That makes sense. When somebody's right on top of you, you flat you don't flash at them, you flash at the floor. Right? So instead of trying to flash her because if we miss it just goes straight past her, instead we look down and flash because it detonates on the floor and then therefore we don't even need to be hitting them with it we can just hit the floor and then there we get we get it right so it, is, it has a good chance of going past them if we if we try to throw it at them where which is what happens right we just throw it past whereas if we were to look down and throw it we can just throw it straight on her right click her because she's right on top of us right and they get an easy kill Go! Oh. 
No, I didn't. All right, so flashbang, we are very hesitant to use our flashbang, and it has a 10 meter radius where you could throw it from 10 meters away and it will hit them. So um, here we could be throwing at the ash right now and getting her with it, yet we don't throw it and we just then therefore let her get away. On top of that, we very far overextend. So we can be yeah. hitting this ash from an angle like back here where we're fine. We can, you know, roll out if we need to, you know, we're good. But we end up walking, continuing to walk to the right. And then yeah, that was a yeah. miscommunication on the team because they, they had told me they were like, you know, the Ryan had said they were going in. Mm -hmm. um, but then he hesitated as I, um, so I thought he was like parallel with me in front of them. Um, yeah, so I would still, um, in that situation, first off, like, just in, even if you are saying it, I'd still pay attention to what your team's up to because we can't see yeah. them through walls. And here it just looks like we're pushing in earlier than they are, right? Like we're yeah. doing this. On top of that, we do, even if he's, put, first off, I would let him walk in ahead of us instead of walking in simultaneously because then they can just focus on, like, you know, he doesn't really do tanking for us if we're walking in without him, but if we wa let him walk in first, then he's drawing their attention from us, right? And then on top of that, we also, even if he's pushing with us, I would still say the same concepts of don't go that far and you make sure we're using cover apply. So here, we just leave all cover that we could be using. Whereas if we are over right. here, we have cover, we have cover, we have objects that can block damage from us, but we kind of leave that to walk onto the open here and walk re really close to them. So there we just walk yeah. in too early without our team, go too, too far in. Okay. Um, don't delay too long unless you think you're going, unless you know that you're gonna be able to get more value out of holding it. So here, right, we acquire targets, we get one, two, and then two halves, right? So here we would probably be able to secure one, maybe two kills out of this, right? We wait, we wait, we let two people get around the corner. So now we're down to one and a half, right? Instead of two and two halves, right? So we want to make sure that we're paying attention to that. Because then instead of securing a kill and maybe another kill, we secure zero, right? So only hold on to it if you feel like you're not going to get, if you feel like you can get more out of it. And this, that would be like a situation like, let's say their entire team has nowhere to run. They're all out in the open, but then they have a bunch of shields blocking them. Well, maybe in that situation, you might want to hold it longer because they're not going to go anywhere. And also on top of that, they you need to be able to break through the shields. Whereas here... There's there if we hold on to it, they're just gonna get beyond cover because they're near cover, right? They here they can just right. get around the cover super easily. So we need to de we need to go for this as soon as we see the skulls, right? Right. Very nice shots. Right. We quest healing. Don't be super aggressive when you're 88 HP. Um, I was on the way to the, the Mega. Yeah, Mega's all the way over here. Uh, yeah. Look how much open space you have to cross where they can see you before you get to yeah. this Mega. Right? Instead, sit behind cover, request healing from Mercy use like right here. Right? So, you're going to be much, much better off if you do that than trying to run over to the Mega. And on top of that, if you are... Oh, snap, my bad. I didn't mean to do that. Um, if On top of that, if you are trying to go over to the Mega... Here, um, I would go for a roll, right, where we're, we're crossing this area fast. So, like, right here, all we'd have to do is roll, and then this crosses that area where she can see us very fast and makes it very hard for her to hit us, right? Whereas we just kind of walk it, and we also jump up in the air where she can see us. So the first time I climbed um, out of bronze up to high gold was with Reaper. Okay. Um, but I've been trying not to play him as much because I really want to get rid of McCree with Nash. Because, can you say that again? I, I really want to get better with McCree, Widow, and Nash. Okay. So I feel like Reaper's kind of like my um, crutch character. Okay. Let's talk on target priority real quick. So, um... As Reaper, who do you think you should be shooting at? Healers and DPS, then uh, tanks. Yep, you completely got that right in theory, but then in practice, it's not really coming <laughs> through, right? So you you are yeah. completely correct. 
until we get into the actual game. So here we have Mercy. Yeah. Of course, Mercy's Falcon. We shouldn't shoot at her. Monkey's fine, right? You shoot at Tank. You you DPS. You're right. DPS and supports come first. Tanks come second. Tanks you shoot at though when they're low, when they're out of position, or when they're the only thing to shoot at. Here, right. Monkey's the only thing to shoot at. Go ahead and shoot at him. Okay. Now, Junkrat comes in, right? And there's Monkey on the floor, right? Now, Junkrat could possibly be his target who we just swapped to, but Monkey's also shattered, so we can focus Monkey, make sure we're going for headshots. Monkey gets charged away. Monkey's dead. Okay, now we swap to Junkrat, who's on the right side. All right, we do. We're good. We swap to Junkrat. Then you get the res, right? Right, now we swap to the Roadhog. So we have Roadhog, Monkey, Mercy, who is currently in Valk, and then people come, uh, pe other people coming in. We're fine to shoot at Hog as of the moment, right? People jump in. We fade out. Okay, so now there's other people here. Now we can be shooting at the Mercy. We can be shooting at the Lucio. And then when Ash comes in, we can be shooting at the Ash. So we have more targets now, right? So we shoot at the the Re Roadhog. Lucio's to the right. We can be shooting at the Re yeah, you Lucio. You'll see me remind myself to focus. Mm -hmm. Lucio. Yeah. And then here we're still shooting at the Hog. And we're still shooting at the Hog. Right, and then we yeah, swap over to the... I'm going to wait on one of one thing. And then I start looking for Lucio. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, so that was first. So I've noticed that I was focusing the wrong target, and then I'm reminding myself to yeah. pick a better target. Yeah. Watch for the Mercy reses. Mercy got away with this twice in a row. Now, the first time she was Valking, so it's acceptable, but this time definitely should not be acceptable if we're paying attention to the fact that Mercy's still alive, paying attention to the fact that they're on Mercy in the first place, just remembering that team compositions dictate play style. When they are on a different team composition, we play differently. So when they have a Mercy, we have to watch out for dead bodies so she can't get reses off for free, whereas here we get her get a res off for free. I don't know what that was. Misclick? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was trying to, <laughs> I was trying to teleport uh, towards the mercy there to to take her out. <laughs> now when it didn't happen, I was like, screw it, I'm just gonna ult. <laughs> All right, so let's talk on uh, strengths and weaknesses. Like, what are we good at? What are we bad at? Um, what needs work? Right. So, uh, let's talk about abilities. So, abilities. Um, we saw Reaper. We saw McCree. We saw Ash. So, Ash. Coach gun, pretty fine. Um, dynamite, want to make sure we're going for them more often, go for them at the beginning of fights, but then also make sure that we're not standing still and letting people kill us for free while we're dynamiting and moving around a little bit, if, especially the further away we're throwing it, because then if we're throwing it a mile away, we're going to have to stand still for like three seconds straight, right? Um, okay. Now, moving on, McCree, there were times where we like had easy flashbangs that we just didn't go for, so go for more flashbangs, don't hold on to it. And then on top of that, flashbang at the ground when somebody's like right next to you. And then there were some situations as well where we could have rolled, keeping in mind that there's three usage, usages that you can use with roll. You can use roll to dodge damage, to reload, and to um, get use it for mobility, right? So there's three instances in which you can use it, and sometimes we just didn't use it when we could have. Um, and then finally on Reaper, we accidentally teleported at the end there. And then <laughs> after, besides that, that was it. So overall... Not like a ton of big things, so I'd probably say it's a low to medium priority for you to work on. Some things, not very massive things. Okay. Ultimates, uh, a little bit bigger than, than the ability usage. Ultimates, we had Reaper ult, which was massive. We had, um, I think we saw two high noons. One high noon was really good. The second high noon, we held on to for too long, so make sure we're not holding on to it for high noons, right? So all of those were fine, good timings on all of them, but then we, where we got into trouble with, was with the bobs at the very beginning, where we threw two big bad bombs, so uh, bobs. So the first one we threw at the way, way too early when the fight has, was not even close to being started, right? That was, therefore, bad Bob, right? No, don't use ults way too early, right? On top of that, we also used our ultimate and a lost fight. So we also want to make sure we're paying attention to whether or not when we've won or lost fights. So um, don't use ults in one or lost fights. Don't use ults too too early. Don't use ults too late. You want to, preferably, we're using our ultimates at right as the fight's beginning um, or, like, mid-fight and then sometimes late fight if you still uh, need to decide whether or not it's won or lost, right? So th those, those are all the ultimate usages probably say overall that adds up to a little bit more than our ability usage i probably put it at like a medium priority for you to work on um then besides that let's move on mechanics mechanics we have just 
general mechanics of just sometimes we just flat up whiff shots, so we just want to make sure we're aiming a little bit better and focusing on our aim. But besides that, we also have a bunch of other things, such as trying to uh, transition from not flicking all the time to some more tracking, and then also on top of that, going for, um, on top of that, cross good, good cross replacement. So aiming at head level and aiming where we know people are going to be, and then therefore hitting a lot more shots as a result. Um, besides that, we have things such as like on, on Ash, making sure that we're reloading every time we get the chance, and then also not reloading when we could be shooting at people, right? Um, and then besides that, what were the other things? Um, thinking, thinking. Um, target priority, making sure we're shooting it. You know, that was very brief. Not, not uh, I think we've seen it like we saw only a couple times so far this game. You know, not, not a very massive thing, but it is another thing to add in on there, just shooting at supports and DPS, not tanks. Um, and then besides that, I'm pretty sure that is it there. Um, so overall, I'd probably say that goes to like a medium priority as well. Nothing like super, I don't think it tops the charts here. Um, then moving on, let's go to positioning. So positioning, um, let's see, with positioning, we went to the wrong high ground. With positioning, we also, like we, on the second point, we went to the wrong high ground. We also dropped from high grounds like twice and then one time it just put us in a really bad position and the second time it killed us. So making sure we're not accidentally dropping from high grounds into them. Um, besides that, we've had some overextensions where we've pushed way too far forwards. We've had some times where we've left cover. So remembering that good positioning is the usage of cover, whereas bad positioning is the absence of cover, right? Um, and then um, besides that, I think that is pretty much it. I think positioning so far has been pretty decent, so I'll probably put it on the same par as the ability usage where sometimes you mess up, and spectacularly, especially with the dropping off the high grounds um, and overextending, so I particularly think that there were two, maybe a third instance where we, like, really messed up with it, um, but overall, I'll probably say it goes to, like, a low to medium, maybe a medium. Um, priority. And then finally, we have awareness. This one is probably the big one. So things such as, make, first off, this is, it covers a lot of different things. First off, paying attention to our health bar, right? There are some times where we would be low and we wouldn't request healing right away, or we wouldn't take active steps to get healing, or we would over, we would go into open areas where we're low HP. So we want to make sure that we're, therefore, we are requesting healing when we are low HP and need it, right? Um, so that's going to get its healing faster. Now that I'm thinking of it, I'm honestly just going to bump up positioning to the medium. Um, now I'm thinking about it a little bit more. Um, we'll adjust them all as we go along here because we have another hour. So we'll adjust these as we go and maybe we'll spread them out a little bit more. But as of the moment, those three kind of seem around even-ish. So we'll just put them all there. So back to awareness, right? Awareness we also have paying attention to. Where's my team? Where's the enemy team, right? So off of that, making sure that we're looking around us and paying attention to what's going on. Um, we have paying attention to what's happening in the kill feed. So, you know, when the fight's won, when the fight's lost, right? When to play aggressive, when to play passive, when to use ults, when not to use ultimates, right? Paying attention to, um, let's see, what were some other ones? Um, health bars of targets and targets in front of us. So, like, we're not letting Mercy get away from us for free when she's 1 HP and standing next to us. Um, Paying attention to what our team's up to, so we're not running in and getting super aggressive when we don't have a team with us, right? Um, paying attention to how far away the, the health pack is and how low health we are, so we're not running out in the open. Um, besides that, paying attention to when the fight, you know, where the teams are in relation to each other, so we know when the fight's begun. Um, let's see, what are some others? Paying attention to team compositions, so we can stop Mercy from rezzing um, multiple times in a row, right? Like, we can we can go and try to kill her and stop her from rezzing if we're just paying attention to the fact that they're on a Mercy. Um, thinking, thinking, what are some other things that go along with that? So there's just a lot of odds and ends things that we've noticed that we just don't seem to pay attention to. Um, and then, therefore, I'd probably say that this one goes to a medium-high um, though maybe it has the potential to be bumped down to a medium, but as of the moment, awareness is a medium high. So that's this. That's currently what we're spread around with. We'll adjust them further as we go. Ability usage is the last. Awareness is the first. Everything else is kind of tied around for the middle, and then we'll um, come up with a solid list at the very end. Does, does that all make sense? Any questions on any of the, yeah. any of that? All right. So then we can just go ahead and get started then. Very, very nice. 
Good crosser placement for it. Notice the massive flicking that we're going for here, like where we're aiming, and then we're aiming, we're aiming straight at Junkrat, right? And then all of a sudden we're gonna go do this big, like, kind of circle-ish flick. Where we go, right? Or like where we we're looking at Junkrat, yeah. and then all of a sudden we go for a flick, you know, a random flick on top of them, right? Um, do you? Uh, never mind. It's. Do you by any chance like what? what what's your sensitivity and DPI at? Sixteen hundred. DPI. Uh, yeah, sixteen hundred DPI. Um, sense is like super low. One point five. All right. So I yeah yeah you're that that's a really low sensitivity. I did I didn't think that that was that was the issue. Um, that's that's even lower than mine is. So I I, I didn't I was like okay I'm pre pretty certain he doesn't have a very high sensitivity. So th then this is just fully. Um, like when you don't have a high sensitivity, high sensitivity is basically like flick for you even without you wanting to. Um, but when you have a low sensitivity, this is fully on you for just like your intent, basically intentionally um, fl going for these flicks when, you know, maybe yeah, we shouldn't be. Mm -hmm. And if we if, if we're needing to adjust way too far, way too fast, like maybe um, it might be we might even want to go slightly higher. But, you know, it's it's if anything, like, you know, it's just make sure we're not trying to flick. Okay, good job taking high grounds, though I would say it was like slightly delayed with the taking of high ground. Like we were sitting very, very far in the back here, whereas I probably would be when they're not on the high ground, I'd probably be taking this high time to take the high ground, right? Like look at where the fight's happening. The fight's all happening on point. So taking high ground would give us much, much better posi like uh, visibility of what's going on around here. But we're sitting really, really far in the back, right? Which means that we're not going to be able to see very much. And then the, by the time we're rotating up to and then we're still on the low ground then we take high ground and by this time we're down a person so right here we see uh, I guess it, uh, yeah so we see the swipes there which is because we're scoped in um, so I don't think we've seen that problem. I think that's only the problem because we're scoped currently. Alright, we get the shot anyways. Good. Yeah, if that if that was, if we were having a swipe that many times not scoped in, then that would be an issue. But because we were scoped in, that wasn't, that, that's fine. The, the how many swipes it took to turn around? Yeah. Because mm. it, it took us like, you know, four swipes to do like, a, you know, a little bit. But that, that was only, um... We were scoped in, so obviously that lowered our sensitivity by a ton. Good shots. Okay, mechanics are looking very solid on our Widow. Although, again, we're seeing more flick aiming. Okay. Very, very nice. Just what they needed. Oh my goodness, your widow's your your monster on here. All right. Um. No one can hide from my sight. Those are all easy. I would honestly like uh, I'd probably be on the high ground right now. There's no reason to be on the low ground from a high ground. We don't even need to be like if we're scared of like people all over there. We don't even need to give them our visibility. We can just be standing like um over here on this edge where you can't where people can't really even see you that well. But then still giving getting a ton of visibility over everything. So just you know taking high ground here when high ground's really good positioning and we're just kind of sitting low ground right now for no reason. On top of that, requesting healing. All right, take, uh, make sure we get healing. And then we also, also, also could have grappled out of that when we saw that we were getting um, ulted. Right, so we see he's going for an ult. We we see that he's going I behind he was us. Gonna come back, back to me. I thought he was going like all my most all my teams in front of me. I was like, why is he coming after me? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so in any, in any case, right, like we don't expect them to, but we still should be watching out for it, right? Still yeah. being aware of what's going on around us here. We can just grapple away from it really quick, and then that gets us out of it. And then also may, being on high ground, right? So now yeah, I gotta, I'm, I'm not used to using grapple to dodge abilities. I got to get used to that reflex. Yep. Okay, take the high ground. Yes, there we go. Um, 
this is not a massive thing at all but it does not seem as though you've adjusted your grapple sensitivity at all is that is that a accurate statement yeah yeah so are you familiar with what that does at all or no no so your grab you have you have a sensitivity on a bunch of different characters like on the specific abilities but on on uh, you don't have any for McCree or or Ash but on Widowmaker you have a grapple sensitivity so if you go to Widowmaker in controls and heroes you have a grappling hook sensitivity so if you were to put this at 100 um, which is what it defaults set to it means that it's going to be I guess it's, sorry it, let's start at 10 so if you were to lower it all the way down to 10 right which is the lowest then it would mean that to you would have to be literally Really staring straight at the object you're trying to grapple for you to be able to grapple to it right so you have to be looking directly at the thing otherwise it's gonna miss right mm -hmm. um the uh, other, and other than that right, the uh, 100 is going to be very lenient it's going to go to like basically whatever is closest to you whatever is you know maybe a, a solid object to hook onto it's going to go there right whereas if you lower to lower it well now it's going to be more towards the middle where you have more control over where you're going um and that means that you can be, go for like grapplings a little bit better but it's not super low to where um you you have to be aiming straight at it. it's gonna be super specific so here you can see where the issue comes into play where we're aiming and we're trying to go to that top high ground right like we're aiming you can see where our crosser's at we're trying to go to the very very tippy top but instead our grapple decides to latch on right here because we're, our sensitivity is at 100 right whereas if we, yeah. we if we had it lowered it would go to where our crosshair was at so this means therefore Instead of maybe okay, so we end up do we we do a jump off of it, so we still end up going to the high ground. But you can see how maybe like let's say in a situation, um, in a different situation where we don't have the option to just jump up, it might end up putting us in a, in the wrong spot that we're not trying to go to. So not right. nothing massive, just something. Which should that be set to? Um, it is yeah, I have I have mine as of the moment like forty, but I can, I can see it being being it could be anywhere from like 40 to 60 to you know it, it's really just anything that's not 100 it's not super important on on a Widowmaker, i don't think um though on other okay. character on uh, most other characters that have this as an option you're going to put it at uh within 60 to 80 range so you have that option on ana with nano on uh let's see what other characters on brig with health packs on echo with copy on let's see what else mercy with beam with her beams and guardian angel you have it on uh do 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 you have it on somber with her hack and you have it on Widowmaker with her grapple and zarya with her bubbles and zenyatta with his orbs and maybe one or two more that i missed okay i did not know that though. So on some characters is more important than others. I'd probably say on Mercier it's is gonna be like much more important on our, on our beam than it is on Widowmaker with a grapple. There we accidentally drop from high gun maybe. That was on purpose. Yeah, that was on purpose. Yeah. Um. Yeah. And maybe. So I should have stayed on high gun. For them? I'm trying to think. This high gun just notice the big visibility gives us though. I think the reason why we drop is because we can't see anything um from here. So then we drop. Yeah. So uh, that's like that's fine. I missed that part while we're aiming. That confused the hell out of me. I didn't shoot. Hmm? I did, I, that confused me. I just stopped trying to shoot her after a bit. The way she was, like, it, when you can't predict that pattern, like, I just give up. Yeah, no, I mean, I wouldn't call it giving up. What what you but what you want to be doing is you want to be waiting for her to stand still, right? So that's the thing. So right there, she was AD strafing. You don't want to shoot at somebody while they're doing that because it's like you said, it's not, it's it's going to be unpredictable. It's going to be hard to hit her. But when she's standing still, scoped in like right now, well now it's going to be super easy to hit her, right? Because she's standing still like so, like so, right? So now it's going to be super easy to hit her in comparison. So it's not I wouldn't say it's like giving up, but it's just waiting until you have a better opportunity to actually shoot her, right? Yeah. Yes. There we go. Finally got her. Grapple, grapple, grapple. Too late of grapple, right? Yeah. Thank you. Oof. Wait till she's yeah, that's, scoped that's in. That's the one where I'm like, yeah, you know what? Screw this. Oh, look, Reaper's just walking forward. <laughs> Yeah, I gave up on that. <laughs> and I 
think I switched to um, Reaper here in a bit. Not Garchia. Very nice. American. Let's keep this moving. So far, mechanics on Ash have been superb. Or sorry, on Ash, Widowmaker have been superb. No one can hide from my sight. Oof. Oh, that's a beauty. Probably be. Uh, whenever we do get the chance, I'll probably be using this time to go to high ground. And then also just tossing in a Venom Mine or something of that sort. Would that have been a headshot if it didn't hit Widow? I mean, Mercy? Um, I couldn't tell. I mean, I don't believe so. Nope, it would have no. missed him. <laughs> Yeah, I switched to Reaper here after this. Right. I just thought um, we were close enough to the final point that I could just... So, if we had grappled up here earlier in the fight, this would mean that we would get our grapple back sooner, because of the 12-second cooldown, right? Um, if we grappled here earlier, then that means that we would be getting our grapple back sooner, which would ha mean that we'd have it as an escape. So maybe coming to the high ground a bit earlier in the fight. Secondly... <clears throat> Placing Venomine just on ourselves, right? This means that if Monkey were to jump up to us, he gets caught by Venomine. He is now dying two times as fast to you and your Venomine, um, which means that he, you're going to be able to pressure him out faster and have a chance to kill him easier, but then also just make him run away from you, right, um, is another thing. So just overall placing Venomine, like, on ourselves there, right, rather than just not doing anything with it. And two different things, so just ability usage here. And yeah, then, I'm, I'm, I really gotta get used to using them. I don't hardly ever use it. Yep. And then, ultimately, be, so far, mechanics have been superb. But because we're not, because we're like, we, we keep dying just because of like a little bit of misuse of abilities, and then also just poor positioning or, or whatnot, or right? like just, just things like that that are feeding into us not being able to do things on Widow. Um, here, use your abilities to get back on Reaper instead of just kind of waltzing back. Use your abilities to get back faster because you'll just get them back by the time the fight starts anyways you can just ignore this this is terrible <laughs> yeah. sure i don't raising. know what the hell i was thinking there yeah. <laughs> Reposition. okay so there we actually uh, use some, our sometimes i think my team are more aggro than uh, they are and that like screws me up hmm. but there's like a kind of a like um language gap because i'm playing in the uh, EU server that has mostly like Middle Eastern people speaking Arabic, mm -hmm. um, so sometimes we can't understand like, their yeah, attention. Yeah, so outside, even outside of comms, like let's say we had zero comms at all, it's also just paying attention to what is our team up to, right? This is part of awareness, and that we we're talking about is mm -hmm. where's our team at, right? If we're walking in in this last fight, like all the way back here, and we're walking in, and we don't see any teammates in, like we can visually see with our eyes, this is our teammates are on the left, our team monkeys trapped. Right, and we're walking in. Monkey's dead, or and we're walking in when we just saw the other people who aren't aren't walking in. So right now we're walking in basically by ourselves, right? Yeah. So we can visually see with our eyes that there's people not with us, right? And then, or besides the hog, hog was with us. So it's just you know paying attention what's around us. Here. Alright, so first off, we just kind of like chill here for a moment, which I'm not sure what we're doing. Um, I was like, trying to figure out where the Mercy was. I could hear her, but I didn't know where she was. Hmm, okay. Yeah. Do, do, turn, do your turns a little bit faster. Here, do we... There maybe looks like we're having struggle with turnings. Um, just make sure that like your sensitivity is not so low that it's hard to turn. That's definitely something you don't want it to be. Like, you want to have ease of turning. So a good reference point is you should be able to do at a very, very minimum with one swipe of your entire desktop 180. Though preferably that would be close to a 360, right? If you're doing one swipe from all the way as far left as you can go to as far right as you can go within your mouse pad space, if you can do 
um, close to a 360, that's fine. But if you're not able to go anywhere close to that, then you're probably at too low of a sensitivity because you need to be able to turn in the game. And here, that that, that turn right there looked a little bit clunky. And then on Widowmaker, when we were scoped in, it looked a little bit clunky. All right, like there, you can see like we so turn, I can do pause turn. 180. 270? Mm -hmm. So that, so 270. Um, no, now you're not going to need to do, because you, you have to keep in mind that we're, a lot of times we're starting off, so think of it like this, right? A lot of the times mm -hmm. you're starting off with your mouse straight in the middle, right? Right. That means that if your mouse is starting off with straight in the middle and you do, you do a, fl you take your mouse and you drag it all the way to the left, you should be theoretically doing a 180. If you can do a full 360, 180 is half of that, right? If you go to the left or the right, you can do a 180 yeah, do on a either 180. side, right? So if you're incapable of doing a 180 on other and uh, on either side, that's not great because that means that you're gonna have to lift up your mouse and then re uh, and then put it back to the middle and then adjust again, which means that you have kind of clunky or slow turnings, which can make it so that, for example, like here, it becomes hard to acquire Mercy if she's behind us, right? So. Right. Just as an example, might recommend just going up slightly higher to be able to do a uh, actual turn, right? As an idea. So I was at one point five, and I just took it to two. Yeah, so I just I just mess around with it, just mess around with it a little bit, see you know see what it is and to like like how high you have to put it to be able to actually move around, right? And and look around, and then also just trying to mess with it just to fi find what works for you, right? Um, is just what I'd recommend. So you know, okay. continuing on. Yeah, so that was me trying to find the Mercy. I'm just shooting around, I'm just shooting we train units. Yeah, and then we also, so we see Mercy fly past us, and then we look, go to look for her. We look to the side, we see your feet, and then we turn back around, like, where the heck did she go? I didn't see her. <laughs> I did not see her feet just now. Yeah, like, so. I missed that frame completely. Yeah. So it's, you know. And, but on top of that, we also saw her fly past us, right? So, like, e even if we, like, turn to the side, we should still be knowing that, you know, she can't fly past us and then immediately be still back where we saw her at, right? Like, we, she can't fly past us and then us turn around and then her be back. So, we're, we're there, we, you know, we just have to kind of go for deductive reasoning, right? Go, you know, go for where she's at, where, where, we, where we know she's at. More awareness stuff, just paying attention, listening, whatnot. Um, audio awareness, let's just talk on audio awareness for a moment. Um, audio awareness, make sure just in setting stuff, um, make sure that you have your music volume turned down if you have it on at all, like turn it real far down, cause, cause you, so you can actually hear stuff, turn up your volume if needed. Um, do you currently have uh, surround sound as an option for like your head, uh, sorry, headset software? I do, but I turned it off because I think it made my audio cues worse. Um, most of the time it's going to make it better. Um, as by the like what surround sound is is it's surround sound that surrounds you right so it's sound that it gives you directional cues so I therefore right I can hear when someone is behind me versus when someone is in front of me or someone's in the back right versus the front left right you can yeah, hear that you know, difference. My man, I'm talking about Dolby Atmos. Yeah, Dolby so, Atmos for headphones. Yeah, so Dol Dolby Atmos for headphones that is surround sound i believe let's see is it surround sound the regular stereo headphones required for this option for an optimal experience toggle off any uh maybe that's not surround sound i already saw those yeah so i have yeah. so my earphones have a, a 7.1 feature mm -hmm. and so i turned them when i turned them they'll, they'll be atmos and mm -hmm. it actually made it harder for me to hear the yeah. directional sounds so i turned it back off and then i turned my earphones back on to um regular stereo instead of like the high end yeah um, so it, I would check to see if you have, like, on your regular headset to see if you have a surround sound as an option. Like, mine mine does give me an option for that. And if it is, then I would, you know, just make sure you have it on um, and whatnot. And then if you do not have anything on, then I would turn that Dolby Atmos on. Though what it sounds like the problem was was that you had both of them on at the same time, which it says, it gives you the warning, like, of that that's not going to work out too well <laughs> if you try to do that. So okay. just just make sure you have one or the other. Just so you have you know surround, a surround sound option. Okay. Uh -oh, uh, she, yeah, that mercy dies the shadow of me for like two hundred years.
Okay. Okay, initially, why... I guess, okay, so we backed out of that because she had beaten and we didn't. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah. But then when he went to alt right there, I was like, oh, okay, we go. But then um, I get knocked into his trap. Um, instead of just walk here, we kind of like walk back into the fray when we don't have our uh, wraith. So keep in mind that we like our abilities versus like when we don't have our abilities, we need to play a little bit more passive, right? Like, so when we don't have wraith, we can't play super aggressive. So we might want to play a little bit more passive. So here, for example, we kind of like walk into swinging range of Reinhardt when we can be without yeah. of his swinging range, right? So we have more range than Reinhardt. Why are we walking into his range of swinging when that's when that just ultimately ends up getting us killed when we could have just sat outside of that range, right? Right. Very massive ultimate. Looks like really, we really understand how Reaper's ult works. That was me going for Mega, but then Mercy got to me. Yep, don't don't go for health packs if they're super out of the way when you can just request healing and also cart heals you, right? No reason right. to. Um, and you also self heal as well, right? So like, there's no reason to go for a Mega in that situation. Very nice. Okay, all good. Alright, and then we win. Okay, so um, that is it. Let's hop over to the next code. Alright. So you're making it really hard on me, man, because everything's everything's all in the middle, which is fine. Right. You know, there's, there's all like everything being in the middle is is perfect, like a perfectly fine thing for it to be, because it just means that you're kind of struggling with everything to a semi equal extent, right? Which isn't is a thing that happens, you know, sometimes, you know, not all the time with people like coach, but it does happen, right? So just keep keep in mind that like a lot of the things that you're struggling with is at a semi equal level to each other. Um, I say in some characters you're struggling with some things more than others like i'll say ash for, for some reason like the the timing was only bad on ash with your ultimates um and that was it and then everything everybody else was really good with the with the ultimates and then mccree a tiny little bit and then ability usage some characters you need some you know abilities more than others so you know some some things are character specific but then um other than that everything is semi-equal with what needs to be worked on with some slight different uh, differences hard work Hard work pays off. I see that Genji there, so I'm probably going to switch. Oh, very nice. That Baptiste is the bane of my existence. Like, he's a he's he's the only plat person in the in the lobby right now, and he like picking us apart and I think I spent too much time focusing on him towards the end of the game. Alright, so let's look at this a little bit. So like just to break some stuff apart. So first off, we don't go for any reloading which meant that we ha we got down to zero ammo there, right? So maybe going for more some more reloading. Then on top of that we our team doesn't like rotate at all. Um here and we kind of drop from the high ground to come to this left side, whereas we probably could have just come here and like still been on high ground and still being able to shoot these guys, right? From a better angle that's not just on the ground. Then we also get like, um, uh, yeah, Reiner gets super aggressive there. Here we're like, we're running to this really awkward side angle where we're first off not paying attention to Baptiste, who is on top of us, like le legit on yep. top of us, right? So we're not paying attention yeah. to Baptiste, right? I didn't Aware see him at all. Mm -hmm. When you know we we have different things that are like you know we have audio awareness is telling us he's shooting at us we can see him on the top left so no he's on the top left we see him jump we see shots going past our face we can see they were being shot at when you get shot at you can see the direction in which you're being shot from so if you look right above your crosshair you can see the damage marker that shows we're being shot up from oh. in front of us or above us right so that's actually directional yes yeah, so that's directional. i didn't know that mm -hmm. 
And then on top of that, on top of that, you also have um, if you look at the top of your screen, you'll see the red red damage markers as well, right? Whereas if you don't see where you don't see that at the bottom of the screen, right? Okay. So that as well as directional too. So you have directional damage indicators. You have the fact that we're taking damage. We hear the Baptiste. We solve the Baptiste, and we also, um, you know, can see the bullets going past us when he misses. <laughs> so all things that in which show us that he's there. On top of that, just positioning is pretty awkward. Yeah, that, yeah. positioning is pretty awkward, and then we're just kind of also out in the open without much cover usage. <laughs> Alright, so we go to McCree, don't come out main, come out high ground, so there's no reason to be taking low ground when we could be taking high ground, so just, just in general, because we've got a couple times where we've dropped from high ground, or we haven't taken high ground, or we're taking the wrong high ground, high ground's fantastic, take high ground as often as possible, high ground, um, all acts as natural cover, right, they can see us, and we back up away from the ledge, now they can't, see us, can't, right, we crouch, same thing. Okay. On top of that, most characters in the game can't reach you. Soldier can't get to you unless he takes stairs, right? Um, Zarya can't get you. Ana can't get you. Ryan can't get you. And then the characters that can get to you, I guess these characters don't, but a lot of characters that can get to you need to use abilities. These two don't, but it's only two characters on their team that can actually get to you. That adds an additional layer of survivability. Then thirdly, on top of that, you have a ton of visibility. We can see all the way over there, all the way over here. We move over a couple a little bit. We see all the way over here. Whereas we're on a low ground, okay? Well, now we can't see anything over there, right? We can't see anything all over on that side of the map, right? Um, and we can't see any of the high ground, right? So we, have, we lose a lot of visibility when we're on low ground. So high ground is fantastic. Take high ground. Here we're not. Make sure we're not dropping from high ground randomly into the middle of their team, right? Okay, still on low ground. Yeah, I think I was going to rotate around, but then they saw me. And then this, I know he's getting ready to try to, I thought they were going to try a nano blade, but I, I didn't know he didn't have it all. So, multiple things here. First off, um, we're not on high gun, so, which I've already said. Secondly, we also are very, very far on the open. So, even if our team is up out here, we don't want to either. So, here we like end up being very, very far on the open, right? Keeping in mind that like, good positioning is the usage of cover, bad positioning is the absence of cover. Here we have a very much a absence of cover where we have no cover anywhere, and therefore we can get killed very, very easily um, if we, you know, don't take cover. And on top of that, we also walk into a fire strike, right? <laughs> Still very far on the open, so positioning went down a little bit. Don't make very long rotations in the middle of fights. So already this game, positioning took a big, like, uh, it looks like the, here positioning is a lot less consistent than it was in the last game we were in. So a couple things. So first off, out in the open, right? Good. We already talked about this. Good positioning is usage to cover, bad positioning, absence of cover. There's a lot of different types of cover, right? You have doorways, you have corners that you can use, they see us, now they can't, see us, now they can't, right, um, you have you have objects that are sitting around, like car, payload, right, you have pillars, you have, you know, whatever, you have stuff all over the place, high grounds, take cover, you stay next to it, don't stand out in the open, um, then on top of that, don't go for long rotations in the middle of the fight, so from the time in which we're doing things, we can count this out, where we're doing stuff, doing stuff, doing stuff, and then we duck to the side, one, two, three, Four, five, six, oh, Mississippi, you. seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Okay, so um, there, there we are out of the fight for eleven seconds straight, um, which we do end up getting a kill on the soldier out of it, but it's we're not always gonna get a kill on the soldier out of it. Like um, they're the only like when rotating the high ground, the soldier had a Baptiste up there with him. And then on top of that, like, he could always turn and look at you, right? Like, it is another thing. So, like, here, we don't, there's no guarantee on the soldier kill when we're rotating. But then also we're just rotating really long through the fight. Now, here, I don't think that it is very highly punished at all because our team still ends up, went, like, uh, kind of staying alive here. But let's say, like, during this time, we're putting our team at a disadvantage. So it's almost as if we're dead for this time, right? Like, a death... A death is like ten seconds of of being dead, and then ten seconds of walking back. So basically, we were like ha that that was the equivalent of like half a death there. Of we were just weren't participating for ten seconds, eleven seconds of time, right? Which just isn't very good. We want to be participating and doing things, right? Because otherwise, we don't have an impact on the fight, and then we could end up losing before we get a chance. And the soldier also stands still for you, which lets you get a very easy headshot on on him. But like, you know. 
Okay. Misses the flashbang, rolling away from him. So ability usage there. And then also just being on high ground to start off that fight. Again, here, rather than coming out to the right, probably should be coming out to the left so we can just take high ground, right? Get above them, right? High ground, high ground, high ground. Whereas in the last game, we did, actually did a really good job of doing that. Whereas here, we're not seeming to be doing that. And then we're like, kind of not sure where we should be going at the moment. Okay. Watch for the deflect. We can aim at the floor. We can aim to his left, to his right, above him, right? Aim around him. And then also, when he's close to you, look at the ground with it, right? Um, and then make sure we're not letting him flash us for free. Right. Um, standing far away from our team, and then we just lost the duel. So there, just like a lot of things. We just died over and over again so far. Yeah. Because <laughs> I was frustrated, and I spent um, a lot of time focused on the Baptiste that I probably shouldn't have spent. There again, don't wait if you have an opportunity to do something, right? So here, we have an opportunity to kill Zarya, right? Why We, we don't want to wait if we have the opportunity to kill the Zarya. Kill the Zarya. Now we wait for the opportunity to kill Zarya, right? This is going to extend the amount of time, and it's going to give them options to get away from you, but then also, it's going to give them more time to shoot at, shoot at you while you're standing still. Here, we give Zarya time, and then she walks into the immortality, right? And then therefore, she stays alive. Only for a couple seconds, but just uh, other than that, just any a little bit faster. Soldier's still behind you. Okay, right? we know this because while we were ulting, we saw him on our left. So therefore, soldier's still hiding in our spawn, right? And we saw that while we were ulting. So just keeping that in mind. You can see it. You can see it there in through the wall. <laughs> Very nice. That'll get it done. Very nice. All right. Not a whole lot we did there. Coming in the next fight, got an ult. Let's see what we do with it. Oh, oh. we're not listening. What, what did we just miss there? I can't hear this now. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, sorry. My my volume's a little bit low when I do coaching. Turn that up a little bit. <laughs> yeah, so, soldiers on our top left, right? So we we just completely we completely missed that. So in end game, make sure audio cues. You know, make make sure we're listening, keeping your ears open. Sorry, I turn I turn the volume down so I can actually hear myself talk while I play. But I can still still hear what's going on because I pay because you know it's it's not it's not just about having having it be loud volume. It's about um, be training yourself to actively listen for footsteps, to listen for gunshots, to listen for abilities and ultimates. Now, that also, I think it goes lower over the stream than it is on my end, but, you know, just paying attention to those things. Okay, missing the flash on him. Alright. Um, and then also just not noticing the soldier that was on the high ground. I understand. So, so far we've died, like five times died. One in first point, one in second point, because our team kept staggering itself. Then, uh, so far, one, two on third point. So, we've only died four, so we've died four times. All right, so I don't think actually we've died, like, super much. In, oh, no, five times, because twice on, wait, yeah, twice? No, thinking, thinking. Um, yeah, I think it's twice on second point. So, okay, like five times, roughly. So I don't think it's like, su it's definitely the quantity and how many times we're dying, but it's definitely the, you know, we're dying f we're dying first and we're dying, you know, which is much worse than dying last, right? If you're dying first, then that means you've already, uh, th then you're putting your team 
you're losing basically you're losing that's your impact on losing that fight whereas if you're dying last the fight's already lost right and in fact it might be better to die if you if you're last alive right you also have thing you know just easily preventable deaths and then on top of that you know even at the, our current rate of five deaths in six minutes right um that's still not a great rate to have that would mean that in by the end of this game we would maybe have like minus five um we maybe have like 12 uh no uh, we'd have like 14 deaths or something like that, which is still a pretty big death rate to have, right? You don't want to have like that many deaths. So just dying, dying too much, right? Just remembering that it really adds up, right? Um, we talked about this previously, but it's like per death, it's like, it's 20 seconds, 10 seconds to walk back, 10 seconds of, um, to, uh, 10 seconds of time actually dead, right? So 20 times 14 and then divided by 60 would be roughly four minutes and 40 seconds, right? Which is pretty massive amount of time that you're spending dead, right? That's the amount of time that you could be getting like three ultimates or even four ultimates um, and the amount of time that you could be getting a lot of kills and doing a lot of things and not losing your team fights and remembering that like when we're dying, we're actively participating in, and we're not just doing nothing. We're also putting a negative impact on the fight, right? Where we're losing the fight for our team. So we want to pay attention to all that stuff because we've been dying quite a bit. Okay, good job taking high ground. That's a good idea. We wait too long again. Uh, you're familiar with the skulls, right? Yeah. Yeah, so make sure we're watching out for them. Here we, we see two skulls. One, two. We can go for it right now, but we wait like an extra second, and then boom, they run, both run around the corner. Right? Too late. No reason to drop from high ground there. Yeah, people are running around up to the high ground, yep. Oh. Alright, so a couple things from there. First off, I think it sucks for some reason Mercy abandons you while you're in the middle of fighting people. Um, <laughs> which which kind of sucks there. But at the same time, um, I maybe wouldn't like... Huh? Yeah, I don't know. In this instance, we just miss the right click on the on the soldiers. The big thing is like make sure actually landing the right click because we miss every single shot there. <laughs> <laughs> and then yeah. And then one's gonna be die. So there we just got out dueled. Really, accidentally dropping from high ground. I guess this time we're trying to chase him, so that, that's not an accidental drop. That's fine. All right, pack him back up the high ground. Good job. Oh, that'll do fine. <laughs> Not flashing into deflect. A lot of flash mishaps so far. And then dying as a result. Alright. Preventable death if we, we just land the flashbang. Okay, miss the flash again. McCree flashes definitely need work because we're just missing a whole heck of a lot of them. And then not really doing stuff with them when we do land them, right? Escorting the payload. Stop the payload. No. You need a doctor? Right. Um. Obviously, a little long of a rotation when we could have probably just like shot at Echo from low low ground, and then. Okay, so we do get a kill on her. So I, I, I just don't know if that rotation was like kind of worth it there, or when we could have just kind of walked main with our team, or walked just shot Echo from the low ground or something like that. And here we're also not sure where the fight's happening, so <laughs> make sure we can we can see like where all our teammates are at through the walls, and we're also we can hear people, and we just aren't like sure what's happening there for a second. 
So there was like a solid like five seconds where we were just confused over where the heck everyone was. This is not your time. No move. Yeah, probably a good decision to keep pushing these guys, yeah. Good on us to keep pushing that. Soldier has been shooting on our left for like a long while and we just took a lo little while to figure that out. Right now we probably maybe could be rotating up to the high ground if we wanted to, since we had a big lull in, in time here, right? If we think, you know, look at their team comp, right? We, we see they're all main. Um, we could maybe go left side here, but that might be a little bit risky. Um, could also go right side. Um, honestly, just you know, some, some either or I think works. Thanks. Let me get you patched up. Oh, that'll do fine. Yeah, we could. I, honestly, we have our ultimate. I'd probably go like, I I'd take the time, go right side, wrap all the way around up, and then we can ult from from back here, right, and ult on, on top of all of them, right, that sort of thing. <laughs> Or if they push forwards further, we can also. Oh, Reaver's getting super aggressive. We can get aggro too. We just left. On, I think maybe on accident. Yes, what the doctor ordered. Roll to go faster, or I mean, it's, we're also trying to be sneaky and quiet. Alright, um, there we get away with it somehow, so, but I'd probably say here there's no reason to shoot at people. So here, everyone's fully tree, there's nobody low, they're all far away from you. Like, the, here we just don't have any opportunities to shoot, and we're also looking for high noon. So here, all this does is just reveal people our position, and we hit one shot, and that's it, right? So we accomplished really nothing while well, getting our mercy killed and revealing her position and then also revealing our positioning and telling their entire team hey i'm going to high high ground hey guys i'm going to high grounds right like that that type of thing right we're just alerting them all to that fact that we're going to high ground um and then they for some they don't they still don't pay attention to you but that, that could have messed up your high noon so that's an example of just you not getting punished for a mistake, right? So, ju but just because a mistake isn't punished doesn't mean it's not a mistake. It just means that you're playing up against other gold players, right? Um, whereas if you go to a higher rank, they might punish that mistake, right? Because they might actually pay attention and look at you when you go high ground, right? So here, make sure we're not shooting at people if we're just trying if we're trying to be sneaky and run around the high ground. Besides that, good high noon. Oof. Rolled. Okay, so we're making it with good time. I assume maybe this is where we get into trouble, right? Where we get into issues. Uh, is on third point if we if we if this is a lost game. Yeah. So we'll see what we do wrong here. So it could be good. oh, miss a flashbang. And now we should be getting aggressive on these guys. We're kind of playing a little bit passive. So you know we we're walking out here. So here they, it's four people right now. It's a one, two, three, four, five, six versus a four, right? And they're down a player, they're down a player. This is a, and also Doomfist is one HP as well. So th as of the moment, this is a massive advantage, if not a one fight, right? Now, I probably say this is a one fight already, right? Because of the fact that you, they don't have any additional advantage and they're also, Doomfist is also low, right? This is a one fight. Yeah, we kind of play a little bit passive. Um, you know, we, we back up, we, we, we do want to have a healthy backup here. All right, we don't want to get too aggressive. Our team's kind of sitting on point. That's fine. Um, you know, we're, we're playing. But then we back up a little far. Okay, right, so we, now we're pushing. You're getting a little bit aggro. We missed some shots. We whiff them. Okay. We can still we can roll into him with a flashbang here. Missed the flashbang. Make sure we're landing flashbangs right there. That, you know, that's account for the abilities that can dodge our flashbangs. Roll into him with a melee or something like that, right? Just spent way too long in that duel, right? And then spending way too long in that duel, and we probably could have finished that, you know, solid seven seconds ago, um, means that we miss out on actually having it more impact on the rest of the fight, right? All right. So our impact on losing that fight was just our lack of impact, right? So bec the reason why we lost that fight, and our the reason why we lost that fight, and what we did to lose that fight was the fact that we didn't do enough to win the fight, right? Does that make sense? And then that stems from us taking too long to kill a McCree. Oh. 
Okay. Um, I'm noticing that we're doing right clicks versus left clicks into flashbangs like pretty inconsistently. Like we're we're not really going for them in the right instances. So we're at 14, 14.30, right? So let's pay attention to that time so we can get back to it. Um, so let's go into when to right click versus when to left click into a flashbang. Okay. So Just when to right click versus, fla versus left itself. click is, is if you have the option for headshots, you left click, right? Because headshots are going to be much more consistent. You can get a kill with two headshots, which means that you still have another, um, you, you still have another four ammo to work with. You can continue to keep shooting right away, right? So you can get the, get the kill and then continue to shoot at other things and not have to reload. And then therefore you have a lot less time where you're not able to do things. Now, so preferably left click if possible. Now there are situations where it's not possible. So think, for example, characters where you can't really hit heads that great from behind or the side, right? Like here, how, we can't, we literally cannot hit his head, hit, hit his head from behind, right? From the side, right? Very, very difficult to hit his head, right? Pretty, pretty much can't even, right? So Ryan are here. The only time that we can go for the headshots on him are if, if we're from the front, right? So if we're from the behind or the side, we would just right click, right, onto the Reinhardt, right? You can also right click if it's a on, if you're not prepared for it. So if you're like right next to somebody, because if you're right next to somebody, you might need to, like you, you, it's really hard to flick up to their head to hit the headshot. So you might want to just right click if you're right next to them. Or alternatively, if someone sneaks up on you, we have to flick around real quick with a flashbang and right click, right? And then you might have to right click. Or if someone like drops in on top of you, right? You might need to right click if you're not prepared for it. But if we're ready for the right click or for the flashbang, right? Like we're premeditating it, right? Like we see them, we're sneaky, right? We, we know that the boss up there, so we're, we're going for the flashbang, right? We know they're on our left side. Now we can pre-aim ahead level and we can even go for a shot beforehand. And now that, that shot, you know, the flashbang becomes very easy, right? And set, to go for the headshot and we don't need to go for the right click, right? So there's instances where right click is better, instances where left click's better. Also, don't go for right clicks if you only have two shots left, right? Like, you know, if you don't have any shots to work with, because then there's a very high likelihood of you not being able to finish off the target, right? Um, so those are, that's mainly it, right? It's just if you can hit shots, go for headshots. If you're expecting it, go for headshots. If you're not expecting it, you're close to them. Or you can't hit headshots, you, you go for, for right clicks, right? And then you can also go for right clicks on shields as well, if, uh, if they're close to you. Oh, that's the wrong one. Whoops. Welcome to Blizzard World. Traveling to Dorado. Ready for battle. Currently we want to be taking high ground. As of the moment, we are not taking high ground. Or at least we took a little long the wrap around there. It's high. Very nice. Okay, went, oh, just skipped a little farther. Okay, it's went for the flashbang from too far away, right? Way, she's way too far away from that one, right? Nowhere close. Also, here you can see the radius of the flashbang, by the way, right? That's the radius of it, right? Just make sure yeah. we're, we're close enough, right? That's way too far away. All right. Um, thinking what could we have done better here? So first off, we missed the flashbang. Secondly, we do fist slams on top of us. Um. <sighs> That's a hard one. Um, yeah, honestly, not like pro probably was the best decision there just to do that. But maybe, maybe we just stayed up forwards too long because we lose our high, we lose our um, our nano, and then we're just kind of out in the open, really far into their team. Whereas we kind of stay up there a little too long, maybe. All right. Feeling much better. Okay, so we go Sombra. Alright, so we have time. We, so far we've played on Sombra, we've played on Reaper, played on Widow, Ash, and McCree. 
Um, just keep in mind that you don't want to spread yourself too thin in terms of characters. Now, um, we'll, we'll just go over that real quick. Is just basically if you, for example, have 600 hours, right, and you put your 600 hours into six different characters, right? Now, that's roughly 100 hours per character, right? Which means that you're pretty spread thin, right? Whereas if you were to cut that in half and go to three characters, well, now you have just doubled the amount of time you have to learn abilities, ultimate usage, different mechanics, different positionings and play styles, right? On these different characters. You cut that down again to two characters, and now you have just tripled the amount of time from the original up to 300 hours, right? On the characters. So um, this really, after, out of every thing I've said today, this is the most up to you thing because it really depends on what your goals and priorities are. If your goal is to just have fun and you have fun playing a bunch of different characters, go ahead and play a bunch of different characters because that's your goal. If your objective is to climb in SR or to win games or to improve, then the fastest improvement is going to come from limiting your hero pool a little bit more. And that's not to say that you never play any other characters. Like, you can play other characters, of course, in positions where you might need them. But for the most part, you're going to prioritize two to three characters, right? Like, try to stick with two to three characters and then only other characters if needed. So just, you know, if, if we're playing five different characters within two games, that might mean that we're maybe slightly spread thin, right? Now, I don't know what your you know full hero pool is, but that's just throwing that out there. All right. So um, let's continue on here. Let's back a second. Okay. Very nice. Don't try to hack people when they're like staring straight at you and shooting at you. I'm out of here. Mucho mejor. Okay. There, if we were just gonna sit around, it would be better if we were just charging up our ult. So just decloak and just shoot at them if you're not planning on getting behind them. Feeling much better. Okay, cloak, go behind them. Here, we're just kind of sitting around a little too much. Okay, very nice. Okay. Um, certain characters have, have much higher hack priorities than others. Um, here, Ana is not a super big hack priority. Like, you can kind of come up with this hack priority by looking at their team comp. Certain characters. Data. Go ahead. I had intended to do Brigada. Bri okay, well, then that, in that case. Yeah. In that case, first off, you want to make sure we're aiming at her, right? So here, it looks as though we're like completely aiming at the wrong person, right? We're not even looking yeah. at at Brig there. I, I, thought, I, don't I don't know why. I, I was like zoned out or something. I thought it was great. Yeah. See you later. Um. We're being healed through that. We might not even need to translocate out, but we do. Um, this translocator is very far outside of the fight. I might not use that translocator because keep in mind, every time that you translocate back to that, you have to take like five, 10 seconds to run back to the fight, right? Whereas let's say, for example, we were to place translocator up on this health pack. Well, now, right, we, most of the time, we're not going to be needing them. We don't need a mega, right? We, most of the time, right? When we're, if we're getting out, a lot of the time we're going to i'm pretty sure these heal up 128 health right or something like that right most of the time that's going to be enough to get us back to near full right on top of that this puts us on a high ground so every time we're resetting back to a high ground advantage and then on top of that this is much closer to the fight where we can you know teleport back throw pa throw one down real quick and then be back in the fight within like two seconds right so right. here we're ha having our health pack way too far away from the fight be closer also cloak we're not using our cloak at all use your cloak you run faster in your cloak right and you're also invisible right so there's no reason not to good hack Okay, here we're not reloading and not shooting. We're kind of just like not sure what we're trying to do there. I did not know what I wanted to do. No. That was completely nice. Yeah, okay, here we have an EMP. So let's see what we do with EMP. Oh, 
Probably should be going for EMP soon. Yeah, that'll be good time to EMP right there. Oh, right there. Yeah. There you go. But notice that because we waited so long to go for EMP, like so here, let's see. Our is our team ready to go for EMP? Yeah, I mean for the most part, everyone's everyone's around, right? You have your you have your ball and your and your Zarya and you know these guys. For some reason, I was all the way over here. But notice that because we took a little bit a little long to go for the EMP, um, we also that also means that Anna died in that mean in that meantime. But I mean Anna probably would have died anyways, see, seeing how far back she is. Um, I just didn't have that information like when. Because uh, no we weren't looking at her. <laughs> we don't have a health uh, a currently. We don't have a translocator set up, and then that gets us down to like one HP there when we don't have a translocator. And we still don't have a tr translocator. Okay, so we didn't have a translocator set up, and then that killed us. All right, we're gonna exit out here because we actually have to go over some stuff. So we're gonna go over the main points of the session, do a quick re re review, and then wrap up the session from there. So let's go over some of that stuff. So, um, let's. We were on a bunch of different characters. So, um, let's see. Main points. Number Pre one was. Ash, we can yeah. mm -hmm. Pre widow Ash, we can focus on. Yeah, yeah, I mean, like it's. I was just saying, saying that. But in any case, um, you know, main point was awareness. That was the that was the big number one thing. Um, though in the second round, positioning did go up. Okay, so yeah, probably say number one was awareness, right? Paying attention to what's going on around us, you know, what's happening, right? Um, what's our health at, right? Hey, just going through a couple things. What's our health at? What? Where's our team at? Where's the enemy team at, right? Um, what's what's everyone up to? You know, we're paying attention to our audio cues and audio awareness and listening for footsteps and gunshots. Um, making sure that we are paying attention to team compositions and how they dictate our play style. Who's winning or losing the fight, just as a quick reminder, it's paying attention to kill feed. When you're up one to two, it's an advantage or disadvantage. Um, or sorry, when, when, when someone is up one or two, it's an advantage or disadvantage. Two to three is a one or lost fight. No ults in one or lost fights, and they also want to look to get super aggressive in one fights and get out or let them kill you in lost fights. All right, and that way you're not staggering yourself. Um, um, besides that, there's other things that go into whether or not you're winning or losing, so pay attention to all those as well. Um, besides that, what else is there? Um, I think that is pretty much it for the most part. Um, paying attention to who we're dueling, so we know like what things can dodge our flashbangs, for example. And then moving on, number two is going to be our positioning, especially like in the second game, we kind of messed up a lot with our positioning, making sure we're taking high grounds, making sure that we are taking rotating the high grounds in between fights and rotating the best positioning between fights. Making sure that we are um, not positioning out in the open. Good positioning is the usage of cover. Bad positioning is the absence of cover. Besides that, let's see what else is there. Um, making sure that we are positioning. Uh, I'm trying to think. What else? What else is, those are all the main ones. Um, don't with translocated on position like super far away from the fights. So we have to rotate every time. Don't do long rotations in the middle of fights so that we can actually, you know, participate in the fight, right? Um, and then those are all the main things, right? With positioning. Number three. Let's see. What's number three at? Um, thinking, thinking. So, ultimate usage seemed to get a lot better after the initial bobs. So probably say ability usage came over ultimate usage, but then mechanics. Probably say mechanics came as a number three. Mechanics is number three, so paying attention to crosshair placement, keeping our crosshair head level, and aiming where we know people are going to be. Um, making sure we're just focusing on our shots. Make sure we're not flicking unnecessarily, like we're not going, you know, with every shot we're flicking, and you know, m maybe upping our sensitivity so we can make turns accurately. Um, making sure that we're reloading every time we get the chance, you know, um, and then not reloading when we could be shooting at people. And then that is, and then also target priority shooting at the you know supports and DPS, not at tanks unless they're out of position, low, or the only thing we can shoot at. Right. Moving on comes ability usage. Um, ability usage on Ash, you know, nothing really with Coach Gun. Dynamite, make sure we're just going for it as often as possible. And then on top of that, making sure that when we are going for dynamites, so that we're not standing still for like three seconds straight, right? To, and letting people shoot at us, right? On top of that, let's see what else is there. Um, on McCree, making sure that we are rolling when needed, right? When we're using for mobility to reload, to dodge abilities. And then also flashbang, we missed a ton, right? Like out of all our flashbang usages, I'd probably say we like actually got a kill out of it. Like probably 
like three out of ten times we used it because we would miss a ton of them and then sometimes even when we hit them we wouldn't do anything with it right so we want to make sure we're doing more with our flashbangs right especially um reaper making sure that we are wraithing and not like letting people chew it like you know there are times where like we just ran at somebody and then died to make sure we're not getting aggressive when we don't have wraith and then not accidentally teleporting like right in front of us right um and then moving on sombra Make sure that we are using our cloak more often. Right? Your basic combo on Sombra is going to be you're going to find a high ground, a place that's near your team. It needs to be near the fight or a health pack, right? So we'd maybe just place a translocator here, right? We'd go in, get behind them. We'd shoot a little bit. We'd hack, do something. We'd tell, teleport back, translocate, and then we would, we would cloak again, right? And go in, right? Preferably a lot of times if we stay in there for a little longer, or like if we stay in the fight, like we, we do this, we shoot, we shoot, we decloak, we shoot, we shoot, we shoot. And then we're finally forced down, we'll have our cloak back, we can place it down, cloak, go back in immediately, right? Whereas we didn't really have that combo down, and we kind of like spent a lot of time outside of fights, right? And then we also didn't use them very often, right? We didn't really use our abilities well. Windmaker, place down that on mine more often, it makes it easier to duel people, right? And then also use your grapple to get away from people more often, right? Um, as we weren't really good at grappling away, right? So that's pretty much it for all that. And then ultimates, um, don't use ults at before fights are even happening, right? Use them as fights are happening. Don't use them at the very end of fights or, or um, also don't use ults in one or lost fights. And then besides that, tiny other things in ults like high noon, make sure um, not holding on to it for too long. Like we're, um, when we have an opportunity, we're going for it, unless we think we can get a bigger one by holding on to it, right? So if every single person was out in this big, wide open area and they're all behind a shield, you might want to hold it longer because then you can get more out of it. Whereas if they're all near cover, you might want to go with what no you got, right? Because otherwise, you're going to get they're going to give them more time to shoot at you and more time to get away from you, right? Um, and then besides that, that is pretty much it. You got any questions about anything that we've talked about? No. All right, so then I'm going to stop the recording.